Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is the first of a kind of new series of videos I'm gonna be doing. I mean, doing very casually. It's just kind of a new habit I wanna develop. Um, I want to introduce you guys to some of the different interdimensional beings that I meet kind of on a weekly basis. I realize that every week, almost every single week, I meet a new collective or sometimes specific individual beings. And a lot of these beings, like I can't ever find any information about them on the internet. Like no one else has ever, you know, put anything out there about them. Um, and some of them are quite specific to the point where um, nobody else has probably met them because some of them are a parallel self of my own. So they're kind of specific to me. Um, so I, I just want to get into the habit of describing these beings. And of course, you'll be meeting their energy and essentially connecting with them in this way. So today I want to talk about Uranian Zeta human hybrids. I don't have a name for them other than that. That's the best I can describe them. They are on the planet Uranus in like the far, 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 super far, super distant from now. We're talking like millions of years, I guess, in the future. And this is only like, not just one timeline, but it's like a group of timelines. It, this is like, represents like one kind of stream of potential futures. This isn't a future that, I mean, that you'll even necessarily experience, I guess. It's, it's, um, one, one potential future, right? So, and they are Zeta human hybrids. And of course we all, or I mean, a lot of people know about the Essasani, um, who, which is a group of Zeta human hybrids. So this is, these are something different entirely. They are like a different, a different hybridization kind of offshoot. And it's like way, way, way super far in the distant future because it's not just about them being Zeta human hybrids. This, they are also, kind of melded with technology, kind of melded with technology in a way that um, I think a lot of 21st century earth humans kind of fear. Okay, so they, 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 but they exist in perfect harmony with their advanced technology. They have technology in their body and they are even born that way, mel blended, blended in a divinely guided way, like divinely inspired. This is not any, this is not technology gone bad. This is like organic and technology blending together under like a higher spiritual, under a higher spiritual trajectory. It's like really, really good. And it is an example of how this can be done in a higher I don't even know, like in a, in a higher state of consciousness. I just know that there are so many fears on earth right now about, you know, all of the ways that technology can go bad and all of the ways that, you know, humans might blend with technology in a negative way, in a damaging way, and all of those potentials are real. <laughs> um, but there, there are so many ways where advanced civilizations and even future species, and I mean, current species that exist out there in the galaxy right now, are blended with technology in a, in, in a, in a way that I can only describe as divine, right? It's divine. It, it can be done and it is done. So, how to describe these guys. Essentially, I, I met them probably about a year ago. And I, I, I'm saying them because I met two of them at once. One of them is myself and the other one is a parallel self of my husband. And it was funny because when I met them, um, they, they showed up as a couple, they showed up as a pair. And I was the male one and my husband was the female one, <laughs> which is probably more normal for us in our, our lives. And it was really like, it was really obviously like us. It's like, we are us even millions of years from now, um, as a different species, it's like, it, we're, we're just, it was just us. And I could, um, see, see them actually, they, they did materialize in my physical vision. So I guess just to take a minute to describe like, what is it like when I meet different interdimensional beings that the experience really varies. So sometimes it's just, you know, my inner vision. Sometimes it's just an impression. Sometimes I don't see anything, right? Sometimes I just energetically connecting with them, feeling their energy, receiving messages from them. Sometimes it's in a dream, a lot, a lot. Often it's in a dream with these guys. I was awake, um, in kind of an altered state of consciousness. I was like, 
really like lost in thought, like really tranced out. Um, and I did see them materialize a kind of materialize in my frame of vision. Um, I mean, if you've had that happen, then you know what that's like, I guess. But if you haven't had that happen, it, it's, it's strange. It's like all of the, the colors that make up the image just suddenly kind of like, like, like appear. <laughs> it just, it, it's, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how to describe it when you receive a kind of communication like that. It's, it looks different than my normal vision, but it just kind of like materializes in front of me. I, I don't know a better way to describe it. So anyway, so I saw them and we, we were both standing there and they were just kind of like nodding and they waved at us. <laughs> and one of, them, one of them was kind of like rubbing their face. And so what do they look like? They um, are vaguely kind of humanoid looking, right? But they have, at least the two that I met, um, have really dark gray skin. So they look kind of more like the Zetas, right? Like the, the tall gray aliens. Um, they look kind of more like that than humans, except they don't look, I, I've met other Zetas and they don't really look like them either, right? They're different. There's something unique to themselves, but they have the big head, the big eyes, um, very, very dark gray skin, like different, different color skin than I've seen on various Zetas, um, like kind of dark gunmetal gray skin. But the really interesting thing was that they have, um, it almost looks like they have LED lights, like in their skin, their skin is lit up, their skin is lit up. So the one that was me, the one that was masculine and like a male, um, although there was almost like no discernible difference. I could tell that one was male and one was female, but they basically looked the same. Like there's not a lot of sexual dimorphism there. They look basically the same, but they had just a different kind of vibe. And I could also just identify who they were because I was meeting myself and you know my partner. So, so I just, I knew who they were that way. Um, so the one that was me, the one that was male had blue lights. Like it literally, that's why I have like these blue, these blue lights up because it's like, imagine if you were to take like a led strip of colored lights and put them in your skin, like put them in your skin and have your skin light up with blue lights. It was like these blue lights running in strips all over, like around their face and down their arms. Um, but the one that was female um had like hot like fuchsia pink lights and i knew that these weren't like they this wasn't these lights weren't like an implant that was like artificially done to them after it was somehow like organically grown like in their bodies it was part of their body but it also wasn't exactly like bioluminescence you know like some deep sea creatures can like light up using chemistry right that this was like technology but i i can't even begin to figure figure out how it works right because this is like so far beyond my you know human understanding i don't know even what to even how to even begin speculating about that but the impression i got it's like somehow they 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 are their species is like melded with technology to the point where you know they have lights like in their skin um and they use technology that is inside of them to communicate and to interact with their world. It's very interesting. And so I did say that they live on the planet Uranus <laughs> and I was sitting there going like, isn't that like a ball of ice? <laughs> so, um, of course, I don't know what Uranus looks like uh, millions of years from now, like in this far, far, far distant future. So basically who knows? And this could be, you know, to higher dimensions, higher densities or whatever. But I did get like a glimpse of my experience, like walking around in this environment. And basically I was in like pitch black, like pitch black, everything, everything like this, my entire environment had was black. And I got the impression that I, that like, there's no sunlight, right? Obviously you're out there on Uranus. You're like so far away from the sun. The sun would just be like a, you know, a bright kind of really bright star in the st sky, I guess. You're not getting sunlight like you hear <laughs> are here on earth, right? So um, everything's just black, but I looked up and I was looking up and I could see the stars and I could look around me and I was kind of like, like hunched over. I was like crawling around, <laughs> crawling around like, like I, I could definitely like stand up on, like stand up like a human on, on two legs and be bipedal and all of that. But for whatever reason, it was like normal and natural, natural for me to kind of like crouch down and like run around like squatting kind of on the ground. And I was like, there were 
shapes that I understood to be some kind of plants, but they were not anything like plants we have on earth. There were like big mushroom type of shapes and big kind of fern shapes. But again, these plants, if I can call them that, were the same as these Zeta human hybrids. They were also blended with technology and they were all lit up in different colors, right? They were all lit up in different colors. Um, and they, it was, it was so much like, like just LED lights, right? Like with, with the rainbow lights, like, or like just imagine going to a club, right? And everything's all lit up like that. Um, it was so much like that kind of ambience with everything just being black, but since everything is black and because there's no sunlight, there's no like bright white light, there's no bright yellow light or anything. So everything is in blackness, but we, we, I could feel how beautiful that was. It was like the beauty of the night, right? The beauty of the, the darkness, but knowing it is beautiful and that and that really allowing an entirely different experience of 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 light the darkness allows a different experience of light and it allows like you know in our skin we 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 could have our skin light up with different colors and the plants and organisms around us would light up in different colors and It's like there was, since there was no central light source projecting and illuminating everything, you would just see the light that every, the color, the different colors of light that everything individually projects. So imagine, you know, have you ever been in like, sometimes even like a mini, I've been in a mini golf course that was kind of like this, you know, where, where like all the lights are off and there's like a black light and then like, you know, different colored lights everywhere. I'm sure you've been in some kind of a environment, like a Halloween party or a club or just anywhere with just darkness and LED lights lit up or like disco bowling, something like that, right? It's that, that kind of ambience where it's really, really cool, really, really fun and interesting because you're just looking at all these colored lights and uh, I don't know how to capture the feeling of just how interesting and how beautiful that was and just how we really appreciated the darkness we appreciated the blackness because it, it it is what allowed us to see the colors because the colors really pop and become a unique expression of every single organism's soul in the darkness it was just so beautiful um so i don't know if that space is like if i was in a kind of um like a dome or something if if because like i'm thinking i i i don't know i don't know because we're talking uranus right it's like a frozen planet so i don't know what happens in order to make this happen <laughs> i don't i don't know what, what kind of evolution that planet uh undergoes in order for life to be able to evolve there but it is incredibly different life and maybe maybe that is why um the life that has the potential to evolve there in these future timelines um maybe that's why it is um why the life is blended with technology because otherwise the life it would be extremely difficult for like you know earth life to live on a frozen frozen snow planet right <laughs> we would we would need something to be different and i think the answer is technology um and the word technology doesn't even do it justice because the relationship that these beings have with their technology is it is harmonious, it is beautiful, it is spiritual, and it is divine, and it is beyond anything that humans have experienced on Earth, like, at all. So, yeah, I don't have a name for them other than the Uranian Zeta-human hybrids. <laughs> and that's it. I just wanted to give you that little snapshot of those beings that I met, and just so that they're, they're, <laughs> they're happy that um, someone is allowing them to connect with anyone who wants to connect with them, right? I, I, this is like an introduction. And now that you've kind of met them energetically, you have the full capacity to connect with these beings however you would like. They are reaching out their hand to take it and shake it and just exchange wisdom with you and they they are very interested in us because we are their like incredibly distant ancestors like right we are so so distant in their past it is almost inconceivable to them so we're trying to imagine what it's like in this incredibly distant future but for them they're they're tuning back into us and we are this fascinatingly primitive but also wow they're, they're like how how were humans so incredible when they were in such a dense energetic environment right 
they understand that the energy on earth when we are alive is like a lot to them they, they, they see it as almost like alarmingly dense and they actually don't know how we manage to thrive in this environment and they see us as they see us as this kind of paradox of us being so primitive compared to them right but they also see that our consciousness is like shining so bright that it that, that it's there's something about the intensity of our consciousness this is this, they're describing to me what this is how they perceive us the intensity of our con consciousness is so bright so explosive and so full of potential so just so full of potential like like an ember that 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 can light oh like a spark that can light a forest fire right but like in a, in a good way <laughs> right the spark that can light the flame um and this is getting a lot more complex than i expected so they're actually um showing me that um in our distant 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 future you know the earth humans <laughs> you know of our time have many 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 different types of descendant species civilizations um different different ways that we continue to evolve and it is the intensity of our consciousness and our is what the intensity of our consciousness is what allows all of this to be so they're kind of saying if sometimes if humans feel like overwhelmed with the intensity of our own emotions it's because we are actually containing an incredibly explosive frequency of consciousness inside a physical inside our physical vessels that are not entirely <laughs> calibrated to it so our our it's like our bodies aren't quite there yet that's they, they see our physical vessels as being quite pr primitive because you know our physical vessels still have a lot of evolution to go through before even um you know homo sapiens if you want to call us that right before um our our type of humans right before before us before our physical vessels before our physical vessels can match our consciousness there's still still a lot of evolution to go a lot of unfolding to go so they're showing us showing me that there's like this mismatch between our consciousness and between our vessels and that causes us a lot of discomfort but they're like kind of in awe of how we manage to handle this and contain our consciousness in our bodies while still remaining in our bodies and they're like if you guys didn't do this then none of these billions and billions and billions and trillions and trillions and trillions of beings of bodies like all of our descendants that go that then this goes into like the incredible incredible future like the inconceivable future right all of all of the descendants of earth the descendants of humanity that march off into the mists of the future landscape it, it's like that's that's why it's all worth it right and that's why we're that's one of the reasons we're here and that's why it is so fucking cool to, to be a human at this time in this bizarre experience that we're having so i think that's it i'm gonna leave you guys there talk to you later bye